Hello everybody, this is Baron of Baron. This is going to be another video guide for the mobile game Whiteout Survival. This is going to be, it's going to be called Shields 101. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each of the types of shields, what they're good to use for. And I'm also going to explain a little bit and give the mindset because I played this game in any way you can. And, well, in other games, free players, low spenders, medium spenders, big spenders. So I got a good general knowledge of why people like to attack people. So if you really want to get some good advice from an experienced player in these type of games, uh, feel free to watch this video. I'm going to try to keep this one short. short. I will have more videos that regarding how to set, protect yourself, especially during kill events. Uh, so make sure you check out the pinned comments below because I'm going to make a playlist because my, my, my goal right now in this game is to teach free players how to always keep safe during kill events, okay? And the reason why I emphasize kill events is because I'll have to be honest with you here. Um, if you are, do get attacked outside of a kill event, there's not much you can do. And it's unfortunate that that's the case. Uh, it's usually always that case in these type of games. So it's nothing just to this game. You know, it's a war game. People are going to hit you. Uh, the issues is, I think, uh, I think a lot of more experienced players that are, you know, stronger, they do kind of frown upon hitting just, you know, low free players all the time in these games. That's why the developers in these games implement these kill events uh, to kind of encourage uh, the big spenders uh, to attack only during those times. That way it gives an active low level or spender or, or free player a chance to keep themselves protected during those events. So that's what will be my focus on the next few videos that I make and I will have those in a playlist for you. Anyway, to get into more, why do people attack? Okay, it's very important. I know it sounds simple, but it's very important to understand why would you get attacked, okay? And uh, if, if you're a, a bigger player, uh, outside of kill events, you're always going to be attacking, getting attacked. If you have a lot of resources in your base and you don't have the protection levels in, in your storage. Okay, so let me get over here to where the storehouse is. I don't want to claim that. Let's go here to details. And right now I have protection of 4.6 million. Just, you know, you, you get that. You, you just look at those details. And basically what you want to do is you want to keep your resources below that outside of the kill events. And hopefully uh, you can pray that most of the big players will scout first before they just randomly hit people. And then if you don't have resources for them to take, you probably will be safe. You won't get attacked, okay? So that's one way to keep yourself safe outside of kill events. Uh, during kill events, the reason, the number one reason people attack is for kill points. So if I, you know, if you keep your troops outside of your base, uh, you're going to be safe because for the most part, if, and if you keep your resources down, there should be no reason for anyone to attack you, okay? But if you keep resources in your base, uh, there's a lot of them. People are going to want to attack you probably at any time. So it's always a good rule of thumb to try to limit how much you have in your base and always upgrade your storehouse as much as possible. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we're going to go into where the shields are. I do like, I'm up on a fence with how they had this set up, and I'll explain it, but I do like how quickly and fast it is to uh, to uh, um, set up and start a shield, but there's a downside to that. You know, It's kind of like a double-edged sword. So anyway, if you, you feel like you, if you know you're getting attacked or whatnot, you can easily go up. To this corner here that little arrow underneath your avatar and click this and then click shield and then you push now i made a mistake okay i used one of my one day shields accidentally because i thought maybe it would you would uh, a, a warning would come up if you wanted to use it or not the last thing you want to do the best advice i can give you if you do have shields do not press these use buttons because you will instantly use that shield Okay, I maybe they might want to maybe just come up with a quick message here and hit yes or no to acknowledge you want to use it. That could solve that issue. But as of now in the game, without any updates, uh, you push one of these buttons, your shield, you're going to use it. So wanted to throw that out there. Two hour shields. It's going to be really if you're if you're 
your hives getting attacked for a short period of time uh, and you just want to get on or you get a notification, you get an attack, you can throw that up. It's mainly for the big spenders that go out a lot of times and they're always out on the map, map during the kill events to attack people. They're going to use those two-hour shields that they got to spend some time with their family watching a movie or something. They'll just throw that instead of teleporting somewhere back to their hives or something. They'll just pop a two-hour shield, shield, go watch a movie, come back and kill more people. That's usually what a big spender will do. Big spenders love the two-hour shields. All right, eight-hour shield, that's going to be basically if you're worried you get in a war with another alliance, with your alliance, and you got to go to sleep or something, you're not going to be able to, you know, it, it, somehow reason you can't do other strategies, an eight-hour shield works. Another great thing is they have rechargeable shields that are eight hours, and I would, next, um, you're going to love this video I come out with. I'm going to teach you how to use those with, with you know, some other things, and basically be able to shield during a whole kill event for like 4,800 gems every single kill event for the rest of the game. So if you can generate 4,800 gems every two weeks, I can teach you how to always be safe during a kill event. So keep that in mind for the future video. Uh, problem with the rechargeable ones is you, it takes seven days. I think it takes seven days for, the, for them to rejuvenate. So... They're, you're limited on what you can use. So I'll, I'll go over that in that feature video. Anyway, uh, we've got that 24-hour shield. It's probably the best shield to use, but it costs a lot. I think it costs 4,800 gems. Yes, I said that right. 4,800 gems. It's a lot of gems. For a free player, I can't recommend using two of those during a kill event. But I do have some strategies that, you know, could reduce that for you. So I will tell you that later in another video. Uh, they're, it's probably the best shield that they have in this game. A lot of games will have a three-day shield. But the issues with the three-day shield is, you know, the game starts to turn up be like Farmville or something. You know, everybody's got a shield up now. Nobody can find any targets. So that's probably why they don't want to go that route. Which, you know, that's a good idea in my opinion. If you want to keep people active and fighting. So, so 24-hour shields. Uh, you would have to use one each day. Good thing about 24-hour shields is you can put it up at the same time every day. You won't forget. So I don't re recommend any free player to use any shields outside of a kill event. If people just want to go and bombard their kingdoms and randomly and do a random attacks on everyone outside of kill events and just kill off the off, off the state or something, I mean, that's their business. But for a free player, you know, you're not going to be able to... To really defend yourself against that attack. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I went over the shields. I don't want to get too much, make the video too long. Um, but I will re-emphasis, you know, uh, if, if, if you get attacked outside of kill events, I really don't know if I can honestly tell you any good advice on how to protect yourself on that. Unless you shield all the time or keep your troops totally out of your base all the time. That could be another option. If you're very active and you're a free player, you could always just keep sending your troops out. You might have a chance when you're not using your troops, you could send them to the banners of your alliance or your headquarters of your alliance. I'll, I'll go over that in another video. But that, those are going to be the only ways you're still going to probably get your pants caught down at some point. You know, somebody's going to hit you. Uh, I really think that the states that use kingdom rules to where a lot of uh, games, what they'll do is like if you're in your alliance hive or whatnot, you're not allowed to be hit unless uh, you're at war with another alliance or if there's a kill event. And, and that's really good because it keeps the active players of those alliances that are low spenders and free uh, to be able to grow. You know, so hopefully in my kingdom they'll, they'll implement that. I think they have. I I haven't had any issues, which is very good on a server. So, so I have I've had some situations that come up, but the, you know you always have that in these games. But for the most part, I am happy on the server that, I, that I'm on. I think that they're they're on the right track. I don't think they're really trying to hurt their free players. So that's a good thing if you're on a, on a server like that. Well, anyway, this is Baron or Bear, and uh, I hope this video kind of gave you some perspective, and I'll talk to you guys later.